Scientists from Sydney, Australia have made an atomic scale quantum processor. This is quite an amazing result and has drummed up quite a bit of excitement in the community and in news organisations. This type of quantum computing, which is analogue, holds a lot of promise in solving issues in drug manufacturing, understanding superconductivity, and even determining whether the quantum wave function plays a role in photosynthesis. The scientists were finally able to achieve this monumental goal through years of dedicated research into constructing quantum computers one atom at a time. While their technique is tedious, it also holds a lot of hope for scalability to larger systems, and thus holds a lot of hope of being one of the few technologies that could eventually realize a universal quantum computer. And this latest result indicates that they are on a good trajectory. But what is a quantum processor? How does it contribute to our quantum computing future? Is this even a major accomplishment? And what is an analog quantum computer? Let's discuss it. When beginning this research endeavor, the scientists aimed to leverage all of the advances that had been made in regular computing and to use these to propel quantum computing forward. This resulted in trying to construct a quantum computer using silicon, as it is one of the main materials used for current quantum chips. They aim to construct the quantum versions of all the basic blocks of current regular computers. Back in 2012, this same research group invented the first quantum transistor made from a single atom. This was an important step forward, but certainly lacked the required power to begin to be useful. Now, nearly a decade later, the same group has made a quantum processor in a similar fashion. A quantum processor is just a collection of qubits that can act together to perform a quantum calculation. Many quantum processors already exist. Companies like IBM and Google have had quantum processors for quite some time, but this latest quantum processor is a little different. And it's not just different in terms of how it was made, it's a version of an analog quantum computer rather than a digital version that is often spoken about. So what's the difference between an analog and a digital quantum computer? In a traditional digital computer, the data is stored as a set of ones or zeros, in contrast to an analog computer that has an array of values. Veritasium does a nice series on the difference between these two traditional computing types. But in a quantum computer, this is a little murkier. The very nature of quantum systems lends itself to the idea that all quantum computers are indeed analog, as the qubit has a range of values rather than just the zero or a one. Instead, digital quantum computers more relates to the restriction of the allowed values and control operations on the system. But more generally, it relates to the programmability of the quantum circuit. In this great article by Ivan Deutsch, he states that quantum digitization depends on our ability to coarse grain the input and the output signals and restrict the allowed evolution to the sequence of discrete steps. In contrast, analog quantum computing is really just quantum emulation rather than what most people think when they say the word computing. This involves constructing a facsimile of the quantum system that they wish to investigate, and then using this to perform tests on the underlying quantum behavior of the system. While this might seem rather obscure and really only interesting to quantum physicists, being able to perform high level simulations of these systems still holds significant promise in solving many different problems. Additionally, analog quantum computers are easier to fabricate than digital versions, as it drastically reduces the complexity of the system, but it comes at the cost of the expressibility. 
That is, analog quantum computing generally can't change the type of problem that they are investigating through programming like digital quantum computers can. So why is analog quantum computing useful? There are certainly problems that don't map well to solving the problem directly, not just in terms of computational time, but we also might not know the maths behind the problem. In this scenario, an alternative is to construct the system directly and to test it. Now say this is the problem of finding a high temperature superconductor. Currently, we make all these different materials in the hope that we will stumble across the correct mixture to make a room temperature superconductor. Of course, the choices of materials is well informed, but we simply don't know what the actual solution is. Making these materials is very time consuming and sometimes not even reproducible as they can be formed from probabilistic procedures. An alternative method would be to construct many different materials using an analog quantum computer. If we had a version of this with enough complexity and programmability, we could iterate through thousands or even millions of different atom configurations until we found the secret to making materials with the exact qualities that we desire. This is the true power of analog quantum computing. It is not limited to problems of superconductivity, but medical, chemical, and even biological research could be revolutionized by having the ability to rapidly simulate different compounds or molecules. Traditionally, these types of simulations on normal computers are extremely slow and prone to errors from the approximations that we make to be able to solve the problems at all. So a lot of value to all of our lives may be generated by this style of computing, giving us all a better understanding of our own physiology and allowing us to create new, more targeted drugs in rapid responses to changes of disease or even solving long existing incurable diseases. So how does all of this play into the latest results? These scientists built a quantum processor that mimics the shape of a molecule. They did this by using what is called a scanning tunneling microscope or an STM. They used this STM to pick up a single phosphorus atom and place it on the silicon substrate exactly where they wanted. In a similar fashion to how IBM made this video of a boy and his toy atom from atoms themselves. The researchers take this silicon substrate with the phosphorus atom and then grow more silicon over the top to protect the atoms and to make them more reliable qubits. After constructing the required electronic components to control the qubits, the scientists can begin to simulate the molecule that they just constructed. The research relied on measuring the electrical current through a deliberately engineered 10 quantum dot replica of this molecule. To be doubly sure, they simulated two different strands of the polymer chains. In the first device, they cut a snippet of the chain to leave the double bonds at the end, which resulted in 10 peaks in the current. In the second device, they cut a different snippet of the chain to leave just a single bond at the end, only giving two peaks in the current. The current that passes through each chain was therefore dramatically different due to the different bond lengths of the atoms. The researchers were able to show that the current that they measured matched the theoretical predictions extremely well, demonstrating that this technique is a reliable tool for exploring new, more exciting molecules that we don't have theoretical predictions for. So where is all this going? What are the future problems that might be solved by this type of analog quantum computer? There are certainly more molecules that can be simulated, but it is unclear what exact problems we will be able to solve. That is part of the intrigue of quantum computing. We have good ideas, but we won't fully know how helpful it will be until we start to realize solutions to problems that are too difficult to solve classically and that are actually useful. But in the meantime, there'll be plenty of interesting results from research groups all around the globe. 
If you like this video, check out this video where I explained recent quantum supremacy results in photonic quantum computing. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.